practically live on scrambled eggs at home. Mind you, they're very good for you. Except for all that clistering. Clogs up your arteries or something. Mind you, they're full of protein. Very good for washing your hair, too. It's sticky, though. They say you can live on nothing else but eggs and tomatoes. Did you know that? Need the tomatoes for vitamins. Don't know which vitamins, though. Probably some of them B ones. And C, maybe. You know, Mrs. Bellingham, I'm really grateful to you for giving me this job. I've been wanting to get a job in Summer Bay so I can be more near Lance. He's really nice. We get on so well together. Not that we're going to get married or anything. Well, Lance would probably want to, but I don't think I'm ready for that sort of thing yet. I want to go overseas. Have you been overseas, Mrs. Bellingham? Um, yes, quite a few times. Oh, it must be absolutely wonderful. I want to go to Rorotura, you know, in New Zealand. Well, that's where those geezers are. They're the things that shoot boiling mud way up into the air. <laughs> I don't know how they afford to keep the mud boiling like that all the time. I mean, I've got a tiny little water heater and my electricity bill is massive. Oh, no. Oh, oh trust me, as soon as I get talking about going OS. Oh, um, um, sorry. Uh, tea will be a little bit longer, but it won't take me a couple minute. Um, sorry about the saucepan, but don't worry about it. It'll clean off in a few secs. I've done heaps worse than this. Um, good morning. Um, Had a bit of a sleep in this morning, did you? Half your luck. As soon as it's light, I'm wide awake and ready to go. Must be my biorhythms. We've all got different ones. You know, like platypuses. We well, see, they sleep by day and come out at night. Or should that be platypie? Anyway, you're sort of more like a, uh, a big platypus and I'm more kind of like a little tiny sparrow or something. <laughs> yes, very good analogy. Yes, well, I've nearly finished in here. I've just got to do the vacuuming. Uh, I've done all the washing and hung it on the line. I'll get you some breakfast and then I'll do some ironing. Have you got anything you want to iron? Um, no, thank you. I'm not going out today. Nowhere to go. Yeah, well, uh, what do you want for breakfast? I mean, bacon and eggs or cereal, toast? Oh, um, just some toast and black coffee, thank you. OK, I'll get it for you. Did you see on the news that terrible disaster in Bangladesh? Oh, really bad. Jeez, they have some awful floods in Africa, don't they? You don't mind if I just finish up in here, do you? Well, as a matter uh, of fact, I'm... Well, don't worry, I won't keep you long. I'll just be a couple of minutes, OK? You know, they're good vacuum cleaners, these. My aunt used to have one just like it. Did she? Yeah. Great for getting into little corners and things. Good suction, too. Suction's really important, don't you reckon? Oh, yes. What are you reading, Mrs. Bellingham? <laughs> All right, good news, is it? I like reading. Yeah, I do a lot of it. It really broadens the mind. Oh, not enough, obviously. Yeah, well, I just finished reading a book. Oh, what was the name of it? It was on the top of the bestseller list for eight. Was it? What? The book that was on the top of the bestsellers for ages. Who was the author? Huh? Who wrote it? Oh, um, um, really famous. Started with a P. Or was it a B? I um, don't know. What? I said I don't know. No, neither do I, but it was a really good book. What about the philosophy of life and the originals of the universe and that? Um, I have to go out. I thought you said you weren't going out today. No, it's a very important appointment. I've just remembered it. Oh, right. Well, lucky you remembered. Oh, it wouldn't be too popular if you'd forgotten. G'day, Mrs B. Didn't reckon this would be the sort of place you'd hang out, eh? Well, unfortunately, Mr S, there is a dearth of bearable places for one to frequent in Summer Bay. Yeah, in top spot, eh? <laughs> so how's Marilyn going, eh? Like, I'm not interfering enough, and she's my girlfriend, you know, so it's my business, isn't it? It has been made transparently clear to me on quite a number of occasions the nature of your relationship with Marilyn. So far, you will be pleased to hear, she is promisingly conscientious. <laughs> is she all what? She's doing well. Oh, yeah, she's a top chick, eh? Uh, Matthew, uh, I need your assistance, please. I've got customers to serve. Because she knows all that beauty stuff, you know? She'd be great to have around. She can give you a mannequin and everything. I take it you mean a manicure. 
Yes, yes. Lance. Oh, I'm so glad I found you here. I was wondering, could you do me a favour? There's a desk in the back room I'd like moved. No worries, missus. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so later, Mrs. B. What on earth are you doing here? I thought you were making a nuisance of yourself in Alfred's store. Well, not that it's any of your business, Morag, but I'm opening a drop-in centre to give the young people of this town some much-needed guidance. You? What? <laughs> See you, haven't I? Oh, you better go. I mean, Mrs. Melling will be back any minute, and I don't think she'd like you to be here. Anyway, I've still got heaps to do. I've got to iron Mrs. Bellingham's yeah, lingo. She's all right, eh? She's down the diner. Oh, mm. what was she doing there? She told me she had a real important appointment to go to. Oh, don't ask me. So how's it going, huh? Oh, don't, Lance. It's not right. I work here. Yeah, but you live here too. Oh, so? Well, so you're allowed to have your boyfriend come visit you at home, aren't you? Oh, well, um, I suppose so. But I've still got a lot of things to do, Lance. I mean, I still have to polish the taps in the bathroom, and I've got to go and sing to the plants. Yeah, all right, the... all right, all right. Well, I, I don't want to stuff this job up like I did the last one. I feel really awful about that, especially since you talked Bobby into giving it to me. <laughs> and Mrs. Bellingham's sure. been real good to me, too. Yeah? Yeah. It's only a vase. I'll what? give you the money for it. But no, Lance, have you got any idea how much it's probably worth? I bet it's Chinese from the Ding Dynasty or something. No, I can't let you pay for my mistakes. No, I'll have to tell her myself. I'll have to be honest with her. Just when I was going real well, too. You can't just leave, Marilyn. Accidents do happen, and, and I'm sure that uh, if you apologise to Mrs. Bellingham and explain how it happened, she'll let you off. Do you really think so? Well, you can always try. No, it's all right. My auntie always used to say, one honest act is worth a thousand apologies. Mrs. Bellingham's going to sack me as soon as she finds out anyway, so I might as well make it easy for her. No, I'll find another job somewhere else. Oh, Elsa, I didn't know you were here. Yes, I thought I'd just drop in and see how Marilyn was doing. Oh, she's doing admirably. Oh, don't! Don't, Mrs. Bellingham, not after all the trust you gave me. And I had to stuff it all up. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you have any idea what that was worth? Oh, Morag, these things do happen. You can't sack the girl simply because that of That was a unique, hand-painted, 300-year-old piece of fine porcelain, and it wasn't insured, so why should I bear the loss? I will deduct $50 a week from your salary, and you will stay in my employment until the value has been paid off. Is that understood? Yes, Mrs. Bellingham. Oh. She's such a lovely lady. Oh.